Good morning. It's good to see everyone here this morning. I also want to add to the announcements just a little bit that uh, the announcement about baby Aria, that is Pat and Diane's first great grandchild. And um, Caleb asked Diana this morning, which you don't, he'll learn when he grows up, you don't ask a woman if she feels older or what her age is. But he said, do you feel older now that you're a great grandmother? You know, adding to uh, a little bit of what Anthony was saying before the prayer and throughout his prayer, we do have a lot of things to be thankful for. This has been, or that has been, past tense, a rough year, and we're probably going to have some speed bumps to get over this year to get ourselves back to where we need to be, but we really are blessed. We are. We are so very blessed. And we need to, <clears throat> excuse me, we need to remember that we have that blessing and that that blessing comes through God. And as I've mentioned before, you know, nothing bad comes from God. Only good and love. And we need to make sure that we're leaning upon him and as, as Anthony said, staying united as, as a congregation, which is difficult, being separated the way we have been. But as we continue on <clears throat> our lesson, our series on Can I Believe in God? And as I mentioned last week, I, I do this every few years to look at this, this subject. Um, and I just really thought with everything going on in the world and all the bad things, that those in the world that don't already have a faith in God, I think they may struggle more about a faith in God at this moment because of where they are originally. I hope that us as Christians continue to just strengthen our faith in, in our Lord and, and knowing that He is in control. But in Psalms 124 and, and verse or 104 and verse 24, it says, O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of of your creatures. I believe that when I look out in the world and I see, you know, for instance, the seasons changing, the snowfall or the spring when the flowers are beginning to grow again and the leaves are beginning to grow on the trees, the, the power and the majesty that is in this earth and in the universe, I see God. I see a creator. And I know that my studies in the Bible lead me to the direction that there is a God. That God is, is there and He is there for us. In 1 Peter 3 and verse 15, But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason, for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. You know, whether we are looking at a science book in our children's school or a science-based TV show, you know, for instance, the, the TV show, The Cosmos, you know, it seems like there's a bias in those things where they go away from the actual scientific method and they want to point you in a direction of, really, of atheism, of evolution, and to me, there is no proof for that type of thing. There's more proof, and I understand there's faith in believing in God. But it makes so much more sense in my mind, the idea of there being a creator, a designer, than it just happened. You know, the scientific method is a method of procedures that has characterized natural science since the 17th century consisting in systematic observations, measurements, and experience, and the formulation, testing, and modification of hypothesis. You know, there's nothing wrong with having a hypothesis. There's nothing wrong with saying, I think this is how things are, and then going and doing the legwork and, and trying to figure out if that hypothesis is correct. But there's a couple of other Ideas. There's the cosmological ar argument. The universe and all that it contains is undeniable evidence 
of the existence of God. We need to realize that there is evidence for a designer. There is evidence for a God. In Romans chapter 1 verse 20, it says, For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, <clears throat> have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. Now, I've never actually seen this actually happen in this illustration because I, I doubt there's, you know, I guess maybe Curious George might go to the library. Liam watches that show a lot. But there's this monkey. He went into a library and he came out and under his arms he had the Bible and Darwin's book on evolution. And someone went up to the monkey and said, what are you doing? Why do you have those two books? And, you know, the monkey said, I'm trying to find out if I'm my brother's keeper or my keeper is my brother. You know, it's things like that. Because, you know, if you talk about evolution, that's where we came from. But you look at other examples, you know, as far as the scriptures. But our universe from the smallest particle to the largest exhibits design. Psalms 19 and verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God. The sky above proclaims his handiwork. You know, I, I mentioned this last week, but who in their right mind would walk up to a computer and say, you know, this just happened. bunch of parts were floating around and all of a sudden it, this, this uh, technological thing just went together on its own. Obviously, what would we say? We would say that's ridiculous. But yet when it comes to evolution, they'll say that what we are today, which is quite miraculous, not <clears throat> even talking about the animal kingdom in the world and, and their design, but it just happened. There was no one that designed it. There was no one that put it together. It just fell together on its own. Psalms 139, verses 13 through 16. It says, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows, it's very, knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my uh, unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. You know, not only is design evident in our world, but it is so beautiful. I mean, you look around, as I mentioned before, the seasons. You know, you ever go out west and you see the mountains? You know, maybe in Colorado where, you know, maybe you're sitting there and it's nice and warm on a spring day and you're looking up at the mountains and you can see the snow on top of those mountains. You know, just the beauty of what God has given us. You know, where did beauty come from? The Lord has made Everything beautiful in its time. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. For every, everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Matthew chapter 6 verses 28 through 29. And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in his glory clothed himself like one of these. Think about it some of those things. Think about the fact that it would be impossible that this stuff just happened. And I don't know how more people don't lead down that path and say, you know what, maybe, maybe I should search for God. Maybe I should try to find out whether or not he's in the Bible or wherever else they want to start. I would recommend there. But we do know there is a God, at least I do. Think about the, the human eye. This is probably one of the uh, 
if not the most intricate things in our human body, it's got to be pretty close to the top of the list as far as that goes. 1.5 million simultaneous messages. Now think about that. 80% of all knowledge that, absor that is absorbed by the brain. That's one organ or muscle in our body. You would have to walk 50 miles each day to get the muscles in the legs to get the same amount of exercise that our eye gets. And really the, the probability of this evolving has never been observed and never will be observed. And you know, even Darwin in his infinite wisdom, let's look air quotes, I'm, I don't really think he was infinitely wise, or wise but he even made the claim about the eye. That really the eye could, is one of those things that, that could t just take the whole thing away from his theory. Because of what it does and how it reacts to the, the environment. You know, think about your eye. You know, when you wake up in the morning and you open your eyes, do you have to say, okay, eye, it's time to see. Start working. Just automatically. You begin to see, you begin to, you can perceive the beauty of this earth with your eye. You can read books. You can do all kinds of things that wouldn't be possible without that. And you know, we could go down a long list of, of things in the human body that, that are just, lack of a better word, I guess it, it, it fits really miraculous. Because they had to be created by God. But I want to turn our attention now to a couple of other things in our world that, to me, are just things that point to a designer, things that prove that there is a God. The warbler flies for three straight days. Now I want you to, if you can see the picture up there, it might not really do justice, but this is not a big bird. This bird is, is tiny, is, is small, probably would fit in my, the palm of my hand. It eats a, a big diet before it takes off. It, it takes in as much nutrients as it needs because it's going to fly 2,000 miles over open water. There's no resting. There's no coming to uh, take a break. There's no uh, taking a nap. Now I want you to think about a couple of things. One, how does that little bird, I mean, you think about it, the brain on that bird's not very big. But it was a brain that God designed. But you think about, how does it know which way to go? There is no, um, as far as this bird goes, it doesn't come down to the idea where, you know, when they're first born, they're, the mom and the father take them and, and lead them down this path. It's inborn in them. Now think about our modern airplanes today. Do you think our airplane pilots could get where they're going with all, without all the instruments? Giving them the direction where they need to fly? You know, because when you're up in the air, it's not like being on a road. You know, now granted, many of us men have gotten lost on roads before, right? But it's not the same thing. You have trees, you have buildings, you have city signs that you can run into, that you can see, that can help you navigate. But yet this little bird has this just... 2,000 mile trip where it knows how much to eat, knows what direction to go, and it knows it's not stopping. One of my favorite animals, not, not, not necessarily I want to have a pet giraffe, but as far as this argument goes. You know, a giraffe can be as tall as 18 feet tall. Can you imagine that? Do you ever sit down for a while and then all of a sudden jump up and you get lightheaded and you get dizzy because you move too fast. Well, I want you to think about the giraffe here. To get blood to the head, uh, he has to have a two and a half foot long heart. Now think about that. Two and a half foot long heart. 
And our heart's nowhere near the size of that. This is a powerful pump. When he bends to get a drink, valves in his neck close. And the last pump in his neck goes into a sponge-like material that can expand so it doesn't over-pump blood to the brain. When he comes back up, the valves in his neck open. The oxygen in the sponge-like material goes to his brain so that he doesn't pass out while waiting for more blood to pump to his head. Now think about that from the evolutionary standpoint. If, if this animal evolved and his, his neck gradually got longer or whatever it may be, but he didn't have all these valves yet, do you know how many drafts there would be? Do you know why there would be none? Because they would have all been eaten. Because they stop to have a drink, a predator comes along, they throw their head up, they fall down on the ground. Just think about the intricacies of that design and what that is. And then, of course, whenever I talk about this subject, I also have to throw in the dragonfly because my, my wife really loves dragonflies. But it's a pretty neat insect of its own. You know, it can swoop down on its prey at 20 miles per hour. Think about it. Have you ever seen a dragonfly? They're not that big. Imagine it going at 20 miles per hour. It can see its prey from over 40 feet. Um, the dragonfly uh, actually lives in water for one to two years in its larvae state. It, it eats uh, tadpole larvae. And if a dragonfly larvae is eating a tadpole larvae, the one being eaten will send out a wave that will turn the other tadpoles a different color that allows them to swim faster. So there's even more as far as the design. You know, looking at the idea that God gave those little baby tadpoles that are going to grow up to be frogs, really a defense mechanism to survive. The inventor of the helicopter studied the dragonfly. You know, the front wings, uh, it has two sets of wings. The front wings give it lift and back wings propulsion. But it can also fly backwards. In other words, its muscles can reverse. So then, therefore, the front wings are, are, are the propulsion and the, the back wings are the ones that are stabilizing. The wings have cells that are thicker on the outer part of the wings so that when flying, the wings don't flutter. You know, you think about some of these things. And this is just a couple of things. We looked at the eye. And, and the eye, not only in humans, that's in all, of an, all the animal kingdom. When we looked at that warbler and the giraffe and the dragonfly and all the other animals and creatures and the ecosystems that God has created. Coming from a book that I read years ago, um, that, that Eric had actually brought me to is, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. It says, as one who came to Christ after years of skepticism, I have a particular affection for Christian apologetics. It is my passion. There is an abundance of evidence for the reliability of scriptures, for the authority of the Bible as the inspired word of God, and that the Bible accurately portrays the historic events it covers, including the earthly life of Jesus Christ, indeed, powerful and convincing proof exists that Christianity is one true religion, that true in God who reveals himself in its pages, that I, the only one and, and only God of the universe, and that Christ died for our sins so that we may live. Now, proof, of course, is... You know, not uh, substitute for faith. We still have faith. We still believe. We, we don't see God, but we will. Which is essential to our salvation and for communion with God. Nor is the study of apologetics disrespectful to our faith. Rather, it takes us back to the passage where Paul is talking to Timothy, telling him to be prepared. It gives us the ability to defend you know, we need to have faith, but it, it, does, it should not be blind faith. We need to know the facts. We need to know the truth.
You know, we, we see that, at least I do, and I believe that those that are here with us this morning, see a God that is a creator, see a God that put a design into this world. But you know what? There's many skeptics out there. There's many who do not believe that there is a God. And as Christians, that is our duty to go out into the world and to teach those around us that there is a God. That there is a God that sent his son to die on the cross for your sins. That we all can be forgiven through the blood of Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We need to have a belief in him. We need to believe that he is. Hopefully, I didn't bore you too much with the, some of the scientific things that we talked about this morning, but I think it's something that as Christians, we really need to look at at times. As I said moments ago, we, we need to have faith, but it should not be blind. Just because we're not in heaven at this particular moment, standing at the throne of God as we will after judgment, doesn't mean that our faith is blind. Doesn't mean that God hasn't given us proof to believe He exists. So, whoops. so finally, God's design is seen in this world. You know, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist, the, the book that I referenced. But I do have the faith to believe in one true God and one creator in heaven. You know, I personally am one that, that does enjoy the subject of apologetics, of asking questions, of, of having the answers, of proof to a lot of the things in the Bible. But we as Christians not only need to know where our salvation comes from, but we need to have a strong faith that God exists. We need to have such a strong faith that when... The terrible things that have happened this year, the pandemic, the COVID-19, that we don't let that depress us and pull us down. But as we mentioned in the beginning of the lesson, to remind ourselves to remember of how blessed we are in Christ. How wonderful it is to be one of His. Not because we're better than the world, but because... The world with the same option has the ability to accept the blood of Christ that is freely given for salvation. So I pray here this morning that if you have any doubt that God exists, that you'll ask questions. That you'll come to someone and say, I'm struggling with this. I'm not sure. God's not mad at you for saying, I'm not sure. It's the idea of being ignorant of something and not trying to seek out the truth. That's when we lose our soul. I hope that we all ask the right questions. I hope that we all have a strong faith in God. But as we bring the lesson here to a close, we offer the invitation to those that are here. If you have not become a Christian, if you've not confessed Jesus and repented of your sins and, and been baptized, we give you that opportunity this morning. If you're already a Christian, maybe you're struggling with something. Maybe you've fallen away and you're, you're, you're sitting here today and you're saying, you know what, I'm coming back. I'm not going to give up anymore and I need encouragement. Maybe through all the tough situations that we've had around us, Maybe you just need prayers of encouragement. But I pray that if you're here this morning and you have any need, please come forward as we stand and sing this song.